Okay, uh, so good morning everyone um, and welcome back for day two of the Summer Jardu Academy uh, 2020. Uh, so kicking off um, today with a session on emerging technology use at Swindon Borough Council, uh, which is presented by uh, Sally Moss, a senior business improvement manager. Um, slightly differently to advertise, um, we've needed to pre-record Sally's presentation with her yesterday as her internet connection just wasn't allowing her to, to run a live presentation effectively for us today. Um, but Sally has managed to um, to join in the, in the conversation by phone today. Um, so she is online with us here. So um, we're going to go ahead and, and play the video for us. Um, Sally, I don't know if you just want to uh, pop online and just maybe just say hello to folks. Yep. Hi, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Um, I'm sitting on the side of the road at the moment on the phone. Uh, you also... Uh, twice once live and once recorded because uh, i added an introduction to the start of the recording as well uh, so yeah hopefully hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the presentation and i will dial in again uh, at the end to, to answer any uh, questions that anyone might have fingers crossed anyway technology permitting thanks for that sally um we've also got um sarah talbot on the line as well should we should we need to get into any kind of technical questions that may come up uh, from the emerging technology use uh, that the council have had. Um, so she'll also be available for the Q&A as well. So please do ask your questions um, as we go through the session um, because we will we will put those um, to the team uh, at the end. Uh, and as usual, please do join the conversation, you know, use the, the Jardo Academy hashtag. We'll share the recording afterwards. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll hit the Q&A. So without further ado, I'm going to hit play on the video. Um, I hope everyone enjoys it and I'll watch out for those questions. Hello everyone, uh, my, my name is Sally Moss. Moss. I'm, I'm the senior, senior business recruitment manager, manager here at, at Swindon Borough Council. Council. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I I'm not able to uh, present this live to you today. Uh, my uh, internet speed was just not quite up to the task. So uh, I've had to pre-record this presentation for you. But uh, as you've probably seen from the blurb, I've been with Swindon Borough Council for coming up to about 10 years now, uh, always working in business improvement, but uh, in various different areas of the business. Um, and uh, I'm here to talk to you today um, about Swindon Borough Council's digital evolution. So, yeah, we've uh, come on quite a, a journey recently. Um, and, yeah, I'd just like to take you through that today. So uh, our journey started with our procurement of the uh, Jardu platform in April 2005 for, with our uh, content management system uh, and our online forms. Uh, and we undertook a, a lift and shift exercise to move all of our customer facing forms from our previous CRM uh, onto Jardu. Uh, then came the development of um, the, the Swindon programme, which was a three year savings programme uh, divided into four work streams. Uh, and um, as part of that, the, the Digital Hub project were, was a platform for digitizing and redesigning all of our paper heavy and manual processes um, around the organization. Uh, and the project kicked off, I think it was in December 2016, uh, when we added uh, CXM uh, t functionality to the, to the system and uh, began our partnership with Consultants Methods uh, and the recruitment uh, of the project team. Uh, so methods helped us uh, with design our, our project approach uh, and identify up front where the biggest opportunities uh, for savings uh, and efficiencies were. They also supported us, as, as did Jardu, uh, in training up the new project team and, and defining our project governance. Uh, the team were all trained up uh, in agile project management, that enabled us to, to work at pace. Uh, and deliver quick wins along the way. Uh, that was the, the plan. Uh, and this quickly developed into what we called uh, the, the Swindon Wadsile approach, uh, as uh, we sort of took a blend uh, and, and elements of the agile uh, project management that worked best for us. Uh, but we also incorporated uh, some of the more traditional aspects of uh, the waterfall approach. Hub team. Uh, with us identifying the, the current areas uh, where the, the most opportunity was uh, and working with those service areas to define how they could deliver savings 
uh, and then going on to write business cases, which were reviewed and, and signed off by the design authority for the project. Um, however, we did identify about halfway through the project that this wasn't quite the most efficient uh, way to progress this. Uh, it was it was ending up taking too long to realise the benefits. Um, so then we switched over halfway through uh, to a more service-led approach, uh, agreeing the budget reductions uh, across the board and then letting the service areas take the lead on how they wanted to achieve those savings and uh, which areas they, they needed and wanted our support to improve. Uh, and, and this led to a, a much greater buy-in uh, from uh, the service areas um, uh, to help them embed the new ways of working and it also front-loaded the achievement of, of the savings targets so uh, that, that was a much better approach uh, for us. So um, a bit more about the, the Swindon programme and, and the results that we achieved. Um, there were four key performance measures uh, that were developed for, for driving the, the programme. Uh, uh, the first one obviously was the, the, the cost savings uh, we identified we needed to save £30 million uh, in 30 months uh, across the organisation. Um, although, uh, obviously, for the Digital Hub project, only £8.6 million of this was specifically aligned to that project. Uh, the, the second uh, aspect was to increase our digital channel shift. So, uh, moving online uh, and away from the, the, the more traditional and, and expensive aspects of uh, phone calls, emails and face-to-face -face interactions with customers. Um, our baseline figures at the start for, for online interactions were, were at the time was 8.5%. Uh, uh, so we had a very ambitious target that was set uh, to increase this to 85%. Um, and uh, th this was recognising that there would still always be the more elderly or, or vulnerable uh, residents uh, who would need or prefer to engage with us through traditional channels um, due to not having the required technology or not knowing how to go online. Um, so yeah, that was that was the second one. Uh, the third one uh, at the time we we had a heavy reliance uh, on paper processes, uh, which was driving a pay, paper usage of 15 million sheets per year. Uh, so the target was set to redesign and digitise those processes to try and get down to just one million sheets uh, per year. And then the final focus uh, of the project was on our customer experience and the, the customer journey. Uh, and it was to increase the efficiency of our processes, both for the customers uh, and for our back office staff uh, by being able to get things right first time. Uh, so that when uh, we interacted with residents, they knew exactly what information was required from them up front. Uh, and, and it could be provided at that first point of contact to reduce the need to go back uh, and gather any additional information. This also meant the customers are kept better informed uh, along the way. And if they were applying for a service that they weren't eligible for, uh, then they would know that up front before they actually needed to spend time completing the full application form. So that made it a lot better for them. Also better for the service because they, they weren't trying to process forms that, that actually ended up with no further action. Um, so the programme also enabled us to design processes which allow people to, to pay online for services up front. Uh, so this also saved a lot of time in the back office uh, in, in allocating payments to, to various different things. So how did we get on? Uh, well, our results, uh, you can see, see here, gives you a bit of a clue, but um, we, we achieved the uh, uh, target of uh, 30 million savings in, in 30 months. Um, uh, and, and generally the project was very successful well, whilst we didn't hit every milestone uh, and measure that we, we set but we, we did a pretty good job um, so as I say we, we reached our savings target across the organization uh, and with in terms of online interactions we've achieved a, a very healthy result of 68 percent of our online interactions from that eight, initial 8.5 uh, we're still working on uh, on that to deliver even more uh, online options for our residents and, and to identify those processes which haven't led to channel shift yet. Uh, and in some cases, we're working with our residents to identify what improvements need to be made uh, to those online processes to encourage them to, to make better use of them. Um, so, uh, yes, you'll, you'll see from the from the slide there that uh, with the print uh, rationalisation, uh, we actually didn't manage to get quite down to the uh, 1 million sheets, but we have so far achieved uh, a reduction down to 4 million sheets per year, which is a, a drastic reduction uh, and a huge achievement. Um, and obviously, this has been significantly helped recently by, by lockdown, uh, with no one being in the office to, to use the printers uh, and, and everyone having to adapt to a more, to more digital processes uh, and opportunities anyway. So uh, what's, what's 
well, how have we continued the journey? Um, so since we closed down the Digital Hub project in 2019, in June, uh, we haven't sat back on our laurels uh, and we've been continuing uh, to review and redesign processes and further develop our knowledge uh, and understanding of the Jardu product uh, and how it can best support our aims for achieving efficiency. As mentioned, we've started gathering feedback from customers about how we can improve those digital processes and streamline that customer journey to iron out any pain points uh, that the, the new online forms have caused for residents. Obviously, it's, it's, a, it's a learning process uh, and we're, we're learning all the time. Um, we also started asking our staff about what caused them pain and frustration around the organization. Uh, and that identified some corporate processes which were uh, inefficient and time consuming to complete. And as a result, we've recently redesigned our complaints process, uh, making it much more efficient for customers to, to raise complaints or, or even compliments, uh, and also um, for staff to respond to those. Uh, we now have a much better data reporting to, to track and review complaints and therefore identify when we start getting an increase across a certain service area. Um, so uh, our staff survey also identified that the expense claims process was slow and manual and relied on having to get a manager to actually uh, physically uh, sign, sign a piece of paper uh, to, to, to process it. Uh, as did raising uh, paper purchase orders and approving them for payment. So these two processes uh, have now been moved uh, online so that staff can fill out and submit a digital form, which workflows th through to their manager uh, or approved signatory, and then through to the back office team for processing. Um, these developments uh, were, were also very significant in helping us to manage during the, the lockdown imposed by COVID-19. Um, so, yeah, that was really helpful. Um, the recruitment process was also identified by existing staff uh, and new recruits as being very slow and convoluted. Um, so uh, methods are currently uh, supporting us to, to rebuild this process in Jardu. Uh, and we've also redesigned and automated our starters, leavers and movers process um, to ensure that everyone around the organization uh, is notified and takes the required action when staff either join, leave or, or move around the organization. So talking, uh, talking about COVID-19, obviously, that's been a big, big factor. Uh, and um, <clears throat> our response to, to COVID-19, obviously, uh, has been part of our digital evolution. Um, in some ways, we were fortunate that we were quite well prepared as an organisation at the start of this year. Uh, before the onslaught uh, of, of COVID-19, we had big plans to roll out Microsoft Teams um, to the whole organisation over the co course of 12 months. Uh, and this was set to be a huge program of work and involving consultants to help us bring staff on board and encourage and support them to use the, the this system. Uh, but obviously then when lockdown hit, this program had to be significantly uh, accelerated and delivered within a matter of weeks uh, to enable staff to continue effectively working from home. Uh, and thanks to the sheer hard work and uh, determination of our IT projects team, uh, this was delivered successfully and everyone in SBC has had to, to jump on board with using Teams <clears throat> in order to carry out their roles from home every day. Uh, another project that, that had been planned uh, in advance of COVID was uh, a, a virtual post room. Uh, this project had hit various stumbling blocks along the way with services not keen to adopt to the new way of working. Uh, but obviously with COVID, this was the only option for mail to be open, scanned and sent across to the addressee by email. So uh, that's definitely an improvement which will be kept um, when we return to the new normal. Um, and um, our familiarity with the Jardu product was also uh, a really positive during this period as it put us in a really strong position to be able to respond quickly to, to, to the new requirements of lockdown, signing and developing new processes in response to these urgent needs that kept arising. Um, uh, the newly adopted approach to needs during this period uh, involved project teams being set up uh, around each particular need with staff from various different uh, areas of the business uh, who all had their role to play in ensuring that the processes and the products were delivered at pace and to the right level of quality. Um, and one key benefit brought about by this uh, new virtual way of working has been um, been a real focus uh, uh, and, and attention to detail. Um, I think probably everyone listening to this has experienced the same thing that, um, that virtual meetings uh, tend to be quicker and more to the point uh, with, with decisions being reached by the end of each session um, in, in ways that face-to-face that -face meetings often didn't manage to achieve. 
the sense of urgency created by COVID led to people taking accountability for, for decision making and, and working together to agree a solution to problems as they arose, rather than sort of defending their own agenda or, or cause. Uh, there's been a real sense of community spirit um, and everyone's really pulled together to achieve the same goals, no, no matter what it takes, basically. Uh, so yeah, a bit more about what we actually uh, what we actually did. Um, so lots of processes uh, developed mostly through Jardu because obviously we had the, the benefit of, of, of being ahead of the game with that. Um, so uh, yeah, here are some of the processes we developed at Pace in response to our support our residents during COVID. There was the application process to allow small businesses to uh, apply for support grants to see them through the lockdown period. Uh, that was very successful. And in the first two weeks, we'd received over 1,700 applications and, and paid out uh, over 20 million in funds to eligible businesses. Uh, and obviously, the key factor of that process was to make sure that people applying were actually eligible for that money. That was a very important uh, aspect. Uh, we rolled out two processes to support our shielded residents. So there was one uh, reactive emergency process for anyone calling into our contact centre to request urgent support, uh, which was then work, work flow through to our Live Well team in public health to coordinate the response. Uh, and um, then there was another more proactive uh, process uh, to, to manage the thousands of support calls that staff and volunteers uh, were, were making to our vulnerable shielded residents. Uh, this was to check in that they, that they were okay and whether there was any additional uh, support that they needed. Um, so we created a simple online form for residents to report any uh, local businesses who weren't following the lockdown procedures. Uh, uh, we also uh, produced a, a digital purchase order form for staff to continue to be able to raise orders for, for goods and services uh, and um, also to, to, to back onto that uh, a digital invoice process uh, to enable these to be paid for. Uh, as previously, our, our purchase order and invoice processes were very manual and paper heavy uh, and they required a physical signature from authorised staff members, so which obviously wasn't achievable during lockdown. So we work with partners to uh, to design and deliver uh, also um, an adult safeguarding referral for, form uh, to enable practitioners to be able to easily report uh, any safeguarding concerns. Uh, and this was another positive example of something uh, difficult being made a bit easier by the unusual lockdown circumstances uh, with the urgent need uh, encouraging different partner organisations to work collaboratively together uh, and make timely decisions. So we also uh, developed um, a quick and easy process to be able to register volunteers uh, at PACE uh, to manage the significantly increased demand because of, uh, during the period we, we had over 500 local residents uh, who wanted to provide help and support to others. So we needed a way to be able to quickly uh, get them registered so that they could provide that help uh, where it was needed. Uh, other processes which were designed and developed in Jardu uh, were our COVID-19 risk assessments. Uh, we also had a process to support the, the redeployment hub, so where staff couldn't do their normal roles anymore and also couldn't work from home in that role, then uh, they were redeployed to other areas of the business uh, where they could offer their support. Uh, so, And then there was also uh, response pages on the website under the banner of Here for Swindon which detailed everything that was going on in relation to, to COVID-19. It was a simple place for people to, to, to find all the information. And a similar sort of setup was, was done on the internet pages for, for staff as well. So uh, obviously that was the response. Uh, now we're, we're getting towards the uh, recovery phase now. Uh, so, uh, yeah, the road to recovery. Um, so how, how have we made best use of, of the situation? Um, so... We've relied on digital solutions during this period, uh, obviously, uh, to support the road to recovery. Uh, so examples of that uh, are using a smart survey to reach out to all staff during lockdown. Uh, we wanted to check in on them and, and check how they were feeling, uh, what issues they were experiencing, whether they needed any additional support or equipment to facilitate this new working from home. We also used uh, Jardu again uh, to create a process for service areas to be able to report the, the positives and the negatives uh, of, of lockdown uh, so that as an organisation we could capture the, the positive new ways of working that had been adopted uh, and respond to the difficulties uh, to ensure they, they were addressed uh, and to understand and prepare for what business needs there would be to enable us to return to, to the new normal uh, when the time came. <clears throat> 
So uh, all services were, were re required to complete a, a gateway review form which was then reviewed by Silver Group uh, to coordinate a strategic approach uh, and to start uh, with identifying which areas of the business would need to return as soon as possible uh, and which would be able to continue working from home. Um, so this led on to um, team level risk assessments to understand how those services that did need to come back could do so safely, uh, could return to the workplace at and what practices and, and equipment would need to be incorporated uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that this safety. We're now coming to the end of this process uh, and some teams will be slowly starting to return from about August. Um, but for a lot of us, uh, working from home is looking like it might be the new normal with a few minor adjustments and, and a bit of technology support. So um, partnership working has also been a, a big factor in our success during this period. Uh, we, we've been working collaboratively with new tech providers, uh, consultancy firms such as NDTI and, and Methods. Uh, they've supported us to be able to see the, the bigger picture uh, uh, and to try out new ways of working that have been perhaps trialled in other authorities already uh, as a way to manage increasing demand in a more efficient and cost-effective way. Uh, there's been a, a really concerted push to ensure that the positives from this situation aren't lost uh, and that those lessons learned are captured uh, and implemented across other areas of the business or, or continued beyond the life of this global pandemic. Uh, an example of this is the decision to develop a, a booking system in Jardu to enable the reopening of our household waste recycling centre. Um, so obviously that was partly shut down during COVID uh, uh, and um, we needed to reopen, but previously uh, with the centre had office often experienced quite heavy demand, uh, causing uh, queues out, outside of the site uh, and, and issues with, with traffic. Uh, so we wanted to very much avoid this happening again and, and understood that there would be very high demand for, for this service uh, as soon as it opened up. So we decided that a bookings, appointments booking process was, was the best way to go for us. Um, uh, so, yeah. This actually, this process has been very successful. Uh, there was massive demand. <laughs> we did crash our website a couple of times uh, in the early days, but um, but the, the things have settled down now and the process is really working well and the service area have decided to adopt this on, on a long-term basis now. Uh, and our emerging tech team are already looking into ways to make this more manageable and sustainable uh, in the long term uh, and to be able to fully automate the process from end to end um, because at the moment uh, the, the front end is, is automated but the back end re re requires uh, actual operatives on site uh, checking cars in and out of the site uh, and making sure that they do have a, a genuine appointment booked. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, obviously that, that leads me now neatly on to uh, the emerging technologies and what we've been uh, adopting here at, at Swindon. Um, as part of our digital journey, uh, we've we've set up a, a new emerging technologies project team, uh, which is funded to go out and seek new digital opportunities to investigate uh, and develop uh, a proof of concept stages. Uh, our first foray into this brave new world uh, has been with uh, robotic process automation uh, in partnership with uh, with providers NDL. Uh, we've designed and delivered our first robot at Swindon Borough Council to support our, our business support unit uh, in dealing with the massive 2,000% increase in demand for free school meal uh, applications. Uh, previously, staff had to review each application and go into several different IT systems uh, to check against eligibility of applicants uh, before the, the, the application could be processed. Uh, and this is now fully automated with a robot undertaking the task of on a 24-7 basis uh, and staff only having to manage any exceptions that are, are thrown up. Uh, and obviously, with, without this use of emerging tech, uh, there's a, uh, probably no way at all that staff would have been able to cope with that massive spike in demand, whereas now the applications take 97% less time to process. Uh, we've also rolled out a, a new uh, and improved reporting process for fly tipping, uh, which has seen an increase uh, during lockdown as well, uh, uh, since restrictions were put in place and, and, and the household waste recycling centre was temporarily closed down. This process uses AI and uh, machine, machine learning with uh, image recognition to enable residents to report fly tipping and upload a photo, which machine learning can then use to identify the size of the load, 
uh, which is then integrated with route optimization to enable uh, the team to efficiently plan collection uh, and incidents around the borough. It also enables residents to pinpoint on a map uh, the exact location of the fly tipping and to see where reports have already been logged. Um, then a business intelligence is used to provide geolocational reports on high level incidents across the borough. Uh, so during the pilot of this uh, project, we received 96% uh, positive feedback from residents uh, that the process was much improved from what was available before. Um, so that the, the next emerging tech uh, investigation, if you like, uh, is to moving on to looking at sentiment analysis to see whether uh, artificial uh, intelligence can be used to identify the overall feeling, mood behind social media messages. Uh, and, and sense whether the, the general mood is positive or, or negative towards the subject matter, uh, and then what technology uh, is base, best placed to uh, to fully automate our, the new household waste recycling booking process as well. So that, that's the, the next phase after that, um, as I say, to, to, to enable that uh, the, the removal of those staff that are currently required to check people in and out of the site. So... Uh, What's next, you might ask, uh, with all these emerging technologies? Um, so I mentioned earlier about the gateway review process, which was designed and delivered to help capture some of the, the positives and negatives that service areas had experienced during the lockdown period uh, and what areas for um, improvement that managers ha had identified that would need to be worked on uh, once we've achieved that sort of return to work situation. Uh, this information was all collated and combined with the feedback from staff and the individual questionnaire responses uh, to help inform and shape our next program of work, uh, which is basically about supporting the organisation to become modern, efficient and effective uh, by sort of 2022, ideally. Um, this highlighted uh, corporate processes that, that we still have that require an element of manual processing or, or printing a paper, uh, such as some of our IT help desk processes uh, and our finance and HR tasks, uh, which, which need to be redesigned and streamlined to automate as many steps uh, as possible on, on the, in the process. It also highlighted areas of the business that would benefit from mobile working opportunities um, uh, and those that uh, are now able to work effectively from home, but require some elements of uh, improved software applications or, or system access. So our next step uh, is to prioritise and plan out this schedule of work to ensure that we can meet these needs uh, using the range of digital tools available to us, whilst also helping to achieve our next round of uh, savings targets. Um, so uh, another thing uh, that, that, that part of this journey really is a uh, customer interaction is, is a big focus we've had some really positive engagement with res residents over this period uh, which uh, is important to hold on to uh, and then find ways to incorporate this more into uh, our sort of day-to-day -day working uh, and the development of processes and services so an example of where this is working well is um, is the feedback on on digital forms where residents are asked to provide feedback on their experience of completing a form, uh, which, as I say, was definitely used uh, in the new fly tipping reported form. Um, uh, what we really want to do next is, is to take this a step further and, and see where we can actually involve residents uh, in, in helping us design those processes uh, and forms up front uh, rather than just providing feedback after we've designed them. Um, so it, Another aspect of that is recognising that actually a large proportion of our staff are also residents. So there's a, a great opportunity there for, for them to get involved in helping to design and test new initiatives and ideas. Uh, so, yeah, we're lo looking for ways to, to be able to tap into that. Um, flexible and digital working is uh, is also going to form a, a big part of the new normal now, uh, with many things across the council being identified as no longer requiring their roles to be undertaken from a, a central office space. Uh, technology has enabled them to stay connected with each other and their customers virtually from home, uh, which means we no longer have the same requirement for, for multiple office buildings uh, and, and can look at rationalising our estates even further uh, and thinking about how else some of those buildings uh, can be used uh, and where those teams that do require a physical base, where do they m most need to be located to be most effective. So whilst we've definitely come on a long journey uh, towards digitization and our evolution is, is well underway, um, we, we've already achieved so much, uh, but it's clear that there's still a long road ahead of us uh, and much more opportunity to, to realize um, and harness. Uh, realistically, the journey 
isn't going to have an ending, really. Um, there'll always be room for improvement uh, and technology will always continue to advance and provide new and exciting opportunities. So our key focus now uh, is to look inwardly at how we lay the stepping stones for the organisation to continuously improve uh, and to upskill and, uh, and train all staff across the organisation to be able to look at how they do things day to day and identify ways to do them quicker, uh, better, smarter, more efficiently um, and to a better quality. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's that, that's the next focus now. So that's all from me today in terms of uh, my presentation uh, but obviously I'm very happy to take questions uh, uh, and also hopefully have my colleague Sarah Tolbert who manages our emerging tech project team uh, on hand to support with any of uh, the more technical questions that any of you may have uh, and obviously this is uh, this presentation is pre-recorded but I will be dialing in uh, live so I will be able to hopefully answer some of your questions live so thank you very much. Okay, um, so I'm just going to give it a minute, just in case the video is still running for anyone. And then we'll dig into some of the questions. Okay, so hopefully you're you're still there, Sally, and able yes, to... Yes, I'm still here. Excellent, excellent news. Okay, so we've had a few questions come in, um, so I'll, I'll read those out for you. Um, I might know the answer to the first one, so I might be able to give you a bit of a hand. Um, so the first one from John Paul Cairns is, um, what payment engine are you using? Do you integrate with Jardu Forms? I think the answer to that one is Capita for online payments and first capital cash flow for, for direct debits. Is that is that right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that sounds about right. I think, I think that's the case. Yeah. Um, Paybridge springs to mind as well. Yeah, yeah. So that's the um, the software that you have got from Jardy that integrates with Capita. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's the that's the case to answer that particular question. Uh, another question from John is: What AI tech are you using for fly tipping and photo analysis? That's definitely one um, for Sarah. Yep, yeah. Sarah, are you able to uh, unmute yourself and take that one? If not, I can move yeah, on. To sorry. Oh, there, there you, go. you found it. <laughs> yeah, found the button. It's always useful for emerging tech, isn't it? <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so um, what we are doing is a number of things around the tech. So um, in terms of the tech, we're using web data that goes in us S3 buckets and we're using image recognition we're using apps and Google optimization and direction um, and then also done conversational networks as well for proactive identification calls um, and we've got some machine learning going on in the background uh, around the fly tipping referencing um, uh, volumes uh, and quantities uh, so that we can load the van up correctly. So the image recognition is analysing the photo, but off of that we're also uh, doing calculations around uh, uh, volume and, and weight. I hope that answers your question, but um, if you need any more info, I'm quite happy to, to hook up on a separate conversation. Okay, well, thanks for that description, um, Sarah. Um... David Cooper um, also asks, well, similar, uh, what software did you use for the fly tipping? Also, are you using AWS for the sentiment analysis? Um, so hopefully the previous uh, statement covers the fly tipping bit, but again, the offer is there if you want to hook up and have a conversation um, or, or see what we're doing. Um, I guess the only thing I did miss out is we use an internal system called um, iShare for mapping, which has all our uh, kind of parish um, and borough boundaries, and so we're also using that to do things like auto reassignment, where it's a parish responsibility. Um, and uh, the team uh, have tablets, so they're doing photographic evidencing or collection, which also feeds back into Jardim and back out to the customer, and they're closing cases live um, off site. Um, with regards to sentiment analysis, we've done a little bit. Um, 
uh, with the Microsoft side. We've done some within AWS, and then we did some Python um, comparisons as well. We did a bit of a, a technology uh, broad scope on, on that one uh, to look at using different elements. Again, I've got more data and info on that if you want it. Excellent. Thanks for that description. Um, Simon Owen, I think this one's probably more for Sally. Um, uh, with regards to the booking for, for household waste, um, how did this prevent long queues of customers and how did you ensure booking times were met? Or was there slippage as customers turn up early and cause unnecessary queuing? Yeah, for that one, um, I mean, we gave very clear instructions uh, on the on the form uh, and the website uh, for, for what people needed to do. We we allowed uh, half hour slots. Uh, we felt that was that was long enough for people to to get through the site, empty their stuff, uh, and move out of the site again. Um, and it's been a, a bit experimental in terms of. Uh, gradually increasing the number of slots that we make available uh, as we prove operationally that that you know the, the site can manage and get those those cars and vans moving through uh, it within the required time frame um, the, the, the the reduction in queues is caused by the fact that people just uh, are informed to turn up only 15 minutes ahead of their slot time no before uh, whereas before we had a booking system um, it, you know in busy periods of the year you know there was no control over who went to the site and when, and um, uh, th there were definitely uh, ex situations of, of long queues while people were, were waiting to access the site and get off again. Um, so it definitely managing the time frames of how many people are arriving at the site within a particular time frame uh, has definitely helped with that that factor. Okay. Um, a question from Andrew Howe. Uh, what process system do you use to track your transactions across all channels to give you the 68% uh, of online transactions figure that you mentioned in your presentation there, Sally? Um, so uh, we mostly use, uh, obviously, Jardu for that, um, but we also I think uh, our customer service teams um, have uh, linking with Qmatics. Uh, so that the, the different data from the different systems is pulled together um, uh, using a Power BI dashboard to present all those figures back on a monthly basis. Okay. I guess a, a follow-on question from me, really. Um, I mean, you you mentioned in your presentation that you're looking to get the extra 20%, I think it was. I think you're going from 68 to your target is 85. I mean, what... What are the council now intending to do to try and get that extra 20%? Um, so we're looking at uh, our high volume uh, interactions uh, where we've got an online form uh, and we're still getting high face-to-face -face, uh, and phone options. Uh, we're going to start talking to customers to understand what it is uh, that, that makes them prefer to use the, the phone or face-to-face or -face for those issues and whether we can improve the form uh, to encourage more people to use it. Um, there's still some areas of the business where we don't have an online presence yet, which uh, we, which we're working on developing so that we can uh, get those last, um, last few areas. And also uh, considering where there might be areas where we have an online form at the moment, uh, but it's not compulsory to use. We're considering whether or not we can move some some of those interactions solely to the online form uh, and remove the, the phone and face-to-face uh, -face options. So there's a range of different things that we're looking at there. Okay, interesting. Um, and you, you mentioned it on a few occasions in your in your presentation, really, that the problem of, of wet or paper signatures, um, it seems like that cropped up on, on a few occasions for you. Um, I mean, how how did you choose to overcome that? Was it Did you take an approach of like, asking on the form for people to, to type in their name again or to tick a checkbox or, or did you implement some kind of digital signature solution or, or what were the thoughts um, on that? It, well, it was mostly through where, where we were then using Jardu forms. Obviously, you've got you've got the sign-in uh, aspect um, to, for the audit trail to understand, you know, who you can prove who's actually uh, using the, using the form and logged into the form. So then, yeah, it's just, um, it's just getting them to... to pop their name in digitally uh, and in some cases where we felt we needed it there's a, a sort of declaration to, co to confirm uh, that you know uh, I am the person I say I am and that I, I am uh, providing information you know to its truest um, extent. 
So there, there's a range of different options. But, I mean, it was, I suppose, necessity uh, is the driver, really. Um, suddenly, when you can't actually get people face-to-face together to, to sign things off, then you need to, uh, you know, reconsider your options and uh, find a, another way of doing things. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, and you, you mentioned... Um lessons learned um, and the new uh, in terms of the new normal with things like the the new bookings process you, you had to implement uh, with the waste, waste refuse sites um, can you speak of any of those lessons learned that that came from that um, well the, the the household waste recycling center booking process has been a, a journey in itself uh, you know we, we, we created the process initially uh, then discovered that the the server capacity wasn't wasn't great enough to, to support the demand uh, so we um, as obviously Jardo had to help us uh, to move our servers uh, to, to increase capacity so that was that was a big part of it uh, we've we've made adaptions to the form uh, we've opened up more slots we've made it easier we, we're talking about some of the feedback from customers is that actually um, at the moment they have to put their details in first and, and then look at booking a slot but then if the slot they want isn't available then they have to go back and you know it's, it's a bit inefficient for the customer they'd rather see the bookings first check whether the, the slot they want is available and then go on to, to book that and then provide their details so we're looking at a continuous improvement for that um, obviously uh, opening up more slots as we became um, aware that, that operationally they could manage uh, more vehicles on site uh, within the, the time frame uh, and also then looking at uh, opening up weekends um, so so just to, to make that customer journey a bit better so it's been it's been a, a continuous sort of iterative process with lessons being learned on a daily basis and and, and tweaks being made to continue to uh, improve the process okay uh, we've had another question from Simon Owen. Um, it sounds like your team does a lean review of existing processes. How do you get successful buy-in from uh, management and more importantly, the business teams? We get a lot of resistance as they are adverse to change and also believe service improvement will cause job cuts. Yeah, it is definitely the most difficult aspect of the, of the role. Um, we we tend to work as much as possible on uh, on a kind of being able to prove uh, our results from from previous um, pieces of work uh, and show that how how that's helped in other teams. Uh, so we we get other teams to to help us sell the product, if you like. Um, and um, it, it's really about building relationships and building trust. Um, the 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 quicker we can go in, we we do a discovery, which is all about really it's for our benefit. Uh, enabling us to learn all about that service area, understand what's going on, understand what the real pain points are for, for the, those um, that service area, uh, and and show them that we understand their needs and their requirements. So that that first phase is all about that building those relationships and gaining trust, um, as as well as us being able to understand you know what what's going on in the area and what perhaps might need improving. Um, but yeah, that's that's really the only way is just providing that support uh, and building those relationships and showing people and evidencing how, how things will be quicker and easier for them uh, in the future what, what, once the new way of working uh, is rolled out. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think final question we'll take today and then we'll just kind of wrap up. Um, we've we had one come in saying, I would like to ask you if Jardu can be used as a knowledge system. I'm not sure if that's been directed at us or, or yourself um maybe if have you done anything with knowledge systems um through through jardu at swindon and then i'll i'll tag on to the end of that sarah is that one that you are aware of um, so i am um working on uh, business intelligence and analytics including predictive analytics where we will look to take uh, the Jardu data, but um, not as uh, in itself as a, a knowledge-based system. Mm -hmm. I think what I can probably add is that I, I know of a few local authorities that have implemented, for example, a Galaxy site, which has just been completely standalone from, you know, from internet and intranet, for example, and they, they've used the Galaxy site effectively as a knowledge center, so that any um, specific knowledge from different service areas and departments is, is kind of controlled uh, within there uh, and obviously it's got all the similar kind of home pages and widgets capabilities so you can hook into you know build some widgets that hook into 
uh, raw data to present information on that on that Galaxy site as well. So that could be something that you could explore uh, as another alternative there. Okay, so I've not seen any of a, oh, uh, there is actually just a couple of last questions coming. We've probably got time for maybe one more. Uh, so Catherine has asked, um, the PO and invoice process sound great. Are you okay to share the designs on the Jardu library, please? Sorry if I've missed it. Um, yeah, I mean, we've, we've always said uh, as an organization that we're, we're happy to share. So uh, I will, uh, happy to speak to the team to get that, get that sorted. And she also asked, uh, what's the size of the team? Uh, who would build these new online services and processes? You've done lots. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sorry, what was the question? What's the size of the team? The size of the team, yeah. Uh, so, okay. so basically, we have um, when when we've got a full complement of the team, uh, we've got three senior business analysts uh, and three digital process redesigners. Uh, so, yeah, the, the analysts go in and, and do the initial investigation, understand the problems, and, and present back uh, potential solutions. Uh, and then the, the the DPRs basically go in and design and develop and deliver. Uh, on those IT solutions, where where the, where an IT solution is the, is the right solution anyway. Excellent. Okay, well that concludes all the questions, and I just want to send a massive thank you uh, to both Sarah and, and Sally for your for your presentation and, and input to that Q and A today, uh, and also thanks to the to the audience for your for your contributions and questions that you've asked here. Um, 